heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This book, uh, Proverbs, is a book that teaches you how to get along with people. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a it's like going to get my eyes checked and they're telling me everything that's wrong with me and Proverbs will tell me everything that I need to fix. I feel like Proverbs is the letter that Jesus gave John to write to the seven churches and these are the things I got a problem with you. And these are the things that are right. Some things are right about you and some things I got a problem with. So let's find out. I'm going into the Word of God, and I'm going to look at myself. This is the mirror of God to me, telling me if I want to change it, these are the things you need to change. If I want to stay the same, then you're a fool. Simple as that. I know that there's two, the two hardest things that I've learned that Paul even wrote to all of us, and it's to us today. It's two things. Especially when trying to get along with people. And I can see it in the book of Proverbs as well as I saw it when Paul was writing to the different churches. Corinthians, uh, the Corinthian, Corinthian, Corinth, Ephesus, Galatia, uh, all those different places. And one thing that he said to those people is God wants men to lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. That means that God is saying, I got too many angry men. And then the job of a relationship between a man and woman or women, not necessarily just women. And he said, women talk too much. Men are too mad and women talk too much. He said, I want you to lift up your hand to me without being mad and doubting that I am who I say I am. That's the biggest fight in relationships is somebody got to say, okay, God wants me to be quiet. And a man said, and God is telling the man, I want you to stop being angry and doubting me. And lift up your hands without all of that. Come to me without anger and come to me believing that I am the God I say I am. And women, to us, Brenda, be quiet. I can do more for you if you cease from strife. And cease, cease means stop. Anything that's not going to produce what you want, don't turn it on. If you doubt that it should be said, then it should not be said. Everything that you say, you should be sure and if it's a relationship between a man and a woman, the man has to let go of the anger and the doubt of God's word. And the woman has to, um, the word says, learn how and when to speak. And I know that being a woman, so I'm teaching as an older woman, talking to younger women, by my experience, and when you think that when God says be quiet, even for the good, he said turn your mouth out like a faucet. If a faucet is running, it may be running good water. But when it, if it's going to not yield anything but strife, he said cut it off. Because I can take care of anybody who obeys my word. He'll give you a time to talk. You're not going to be walking around like, I got to say it. He said, I'll let you talk. I understand you. I made you. And men, that thing that makes you so angry until all you can demonstrate is, I don't like it. He said, I want to work on you too. So when you feel yourself getting heated, turn it off. Just cut the faucet off. Shh. And then let God, he said, I am honored. That's what the word says. And we're going to see that today. I'm honored when we let me 
be the one in charge. Wine is a mocker. Girl, did you see that? <laughs> that was so funny. Wine gets you fun acting. Strong drink is raging. <gasps> so wine makes you a mocker, meaning that you just really have a good time. And strong drinks make you want to fight somebody. And whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. He said, if you don't know what these drinks can do to you, you are not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. He said, the fear of a king. Now, if a king, the fear of a king is as a, as a roaring of a lion. So if you, being the king, and somebody is fearful of you, they feel like they have, you have the power to take their lives. Whoever provokes him to anger sins his own soul. If you provoke a king, this is what Solomon is saying, then you're in danger for your own life. Now, we don't have kings in the United States. But if you do anything to provoke somebody in leadership, if they have that kind of power, he said you're going to hurt yourself. So the best thing to do is don't provoke the person in charge. It's a way that you can talk to people that's in, that are in charge. And you can pretty much get the thing that is right from him. You just got to learn the wisdom of how to um, communicate. But provoking him and making him mad, you're saying that he's you putting yourself in trouble. So these are practical things that we can learn in, in order to relate to each other. The word says, it is an honor for a man to cease from strife. It's an honor to see a person back and off when they see they, they are getting ready to say or do something that is not going to end up good. God said, you honor me when you back off. He said, I get excited. But every fool will be meddling. He said, now you continue to go on knowing that you heed it, you're a fool. So this is saying, you want to be wise? Back off. If you want to be a fool, plunge in. If heat, temperature, I got to say it, I'm going to hurt you. Those are the characteristics of a fool. And that's what God said. Oh, you ain't supposed to call nobody a fool. I can't call nobody nothing. I just said what the word says. Brenda, if you act like that, you are a fool. And if you could get some self-control, pull yourself together, don't say anything now because you're too heated, then I'm honored. The only somebody that knows how to manage heat is God. And the best thing that we can do is say, right now, I just need to back off. Because if I say something right now, it's not going to produce peace. Now we're getting ready to talk about a lazy man. The slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. That means that he said it's too hot, too cold, I can't do it. I always got some reason to say why I can't do what I need to do. Shall he beg and harvest and nothing? He said he will be, this is, he said this is a sure uh, uh, after the fact. I complain about the time I should have been working, then I beg the time I need something to be paid. He's because he won't have anything. So what is God saying to us? If you're lazy, don't make excuses not to do your job. Because there will be a time you're going to need that money. Counseling the heart of a man is deep water. Counsel in the uh, heart of a man is deep water. In other words, I got a lot of ideas on the inside of me. I got a whole some good, some not good, all on the inside of me, and I can just pull up ideas in order to do what I want to do. He said, but a man of understanding would draw it out. So 
Inside of me, I have the word of God. And then I got some, some things I think I ought to do myself without the word of God or not good things. He said, but a man of understanding, somebody who understands what to do, knows how to draw the right um, response out. Or you can talk to somebody else who's got a whole lot of things going on and then you can give them advice and say, this is what I would do according to the word and I know it will work. But you got to be full of the word. Somebody has to have the word of God in order to help another person or to help themselves. Most men will say, every one of his, he'll talk about his own goodness. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. In other words, most men will say to you, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm a pretty good person. That's what most men will say. But a faithful man who can find. Oh, I want this job. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. But a faithful man, after you get through saying, I want and I can do these things, and then the question says, but after you get through boasting about you can do things right, then the next question says, but a faithful man, he said, who can find? That's what the word said. Most men will proclaim, oh, I can do this. But then he said, but afterwards, who can you find that really lived up to what they said they can do? And possibly can do it. They just don't do it. And I heard a man say yesterday, he said, I don't know not one man that, that was, well, let me see it like he said it. He said, a lot of men are not faithful. And it came from a man's mouth. Go to YouTube, put in Proverbs 20, and this guy named Pastor Paul, he said it. He said, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, I, even, even myself, he said, uh, it's hard to find a faithful man. A man said that. That's not a good representation of men. But guess what God said? It's hard to find a faithful woman. Because right now, uh, Solomon is talking about the men. But he don't talk about the women too. He says it's hard to find anybody faithful. People talk. But they don't live up behind their speech. And God is saying... Everybody likes to say, I can do the job. But when you hire them, who, you, who is really going to do it? Not many. The just walk in his integrity. His children blessed after him. So anybody that, that has children and you train them right and do right before them, he said, you are going to leave your child a blessing or to be a blessing. You train them right, they will be a blessing. Then if you have something you want to give them, they will be blessed. So either way, uh, it's good to know God, especially when you're training the children. A king that sits in the throne of judgment scatters away all evil with his eyes. The king does it. All he has to do is focus on you. All he has to do is look. With the, authority, with the authority that he has, and he can stop people from doing things that's wrong just by looking at them. I know it to be true. Because my mama used to look at church and we doing anything wrong, and all she do is gave us that look. And you knew what that look meant because she had already demonstrated at home when she bite her lip. It means, uh, stop. He said this relation, relationship, relation, how to have a good relationship with other people. Mom and dad, leader, employee, employer, husband, wife, man to man, people to people. Next good advice. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from sin. He said, can anybody say they can do right without God? The answer is no. He said, divers weights and divers measures, both of them 
a like abomination to the Lord. God is saying, treat people fairly. Don't charge any more than what is worth. Don't go to work and say, I work eight hours, and you really have only four and a half hours justifiable. You, you demand an eight hour paycheck, then God says to do eight hours worth of work. Uh, if you borrow money, and he said to the believers, don't charge interest to your brother. That's the world's way of doing things. If he's already in trouble and he owe you $10, why would you make him pay you back 15? He said, you don't do that. Even businesses do it, but he said, relationship-wise, eye for an eye. You shouldn't, uh, if somebody stole my lawnmower, I shouldn't charge them as much to pay me back as if I want them to buy me a car. Get what is right. Keep people eyes on you because you represent me, says the Lord. If I don't charge any more than what is worth, neither should you. So in other words, don't take advantage of people and cheat them out of something that God says you don't have a right to. He said, even a child is known by his doings. So God said, let me take it back to children. Whether his work be, whether his work pure, and whether right. So when a child is born, he starts behaviors. If the parent is watching him, you can prevent that child with the right instructions and the right correction when you see him get off track. Because what is going to happen is he's going to grow up and he's going to be older in that behavior. And after a while, nobody can do anything with him. Now he's just going to be a menace to society. He's going to be a debt or a deficit. So he said, you can look at a child and see which way he's going and bring correction. But if you ignore him, you're going to pay later. You're going to hate him. You're going to train him while he still has hope. The hearing ear... And the seeing eye, the Lord has made even both of them. So when you look into the word of God, take your time, and your eyes begin to see yourself in the word of God or hear what God is saying to you, he said, that came from me. You can actually get in this book and it will become a mirror. And he said, if you are able to see correctly, then you will know that is from me. Because a lot of people can read this book and they pick out things and he said, that's not the way I do things. This book is to be simmered. It is to be read slowly and to be looked at as if your life depend upon it, upon it. The understanding of it. He said, don't love sleep unless you come to poverty. If you like to sleep, you're gonna, you're gonna be broke and you're gonna, it's not gonna, life is not gonna be good. Open your eyes and you shall be satisfied with bread. In other words, get up, get, your, get together and get yourself together and he said, you'll have. You'll be satisfied. God made us to work. And he said, but if you lay in the bed all day long, you are not good for anything. And you will be begging. And then people don't want to get away from around you because here you go again. It is now, it is now, says the buyer. Ooh, uh, uh, you see this right here? You see this, this? You see this spot right here? See, it's a spot on this. It's a spot right here. And I, how much you say this here? Two dollars. Well, I, don't, I think it's worth uh, seventy-five cents. See that spot? No, no, that's what the word says. And then you get outside and say, look what I got for 75 cents. Now you boast. God said, I saw you. You need to say all that while you tell the man to knock it down. Now I wouldn't go in the store and try I used to. I used a coupon and said, can I get it on sale? There's a discount.
I don't even think God would please with that. But then to find something wrong with something and then try to break the people down and then they break down and then you go outside and boast about it. God said, uh, I wrote that down. He says, not good business. Why? Because you don't want to do you like that. Business owners, they know business, so they won't do that. But we do it. When we don't have business, we take advantage of people that do. But God said, I got my eyes on it. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge, a precious jewel. You got all the money in the world, but if you don't have any sense, you just got all the money in the world. But if you got sense, you better than a person that's got everything. If you got God's knowledge. Now, with God's knowledge, it's going to be demonstrated. But you have, you know what to do when you have. And your knowledge tells you what to do when you got money. And it also keeps you on, on the surface when you don't have. But a person that has a lot of money and don't know how to use it. When you don't have it, it's not going to be in your best interest. So it's best to have knowledge than to have stuff. Because if you lose stuff, at least you still got a way to go back and get it. I started this company and it went down for whatever reason. I know how to build it back up. I know how to do it. But if you just give me all the money and then I don't know how to use it. And then when I lose it, I'm back where I was in the beginning. Broke. Uh, take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge to him for a strange woman. Anytime you are going to deal with business and you don't know these people, but you're trying to help them, he said, get some collateral. You, you don't know them. You got it? Because otherwise, if you just say, okay, he said, no. Give me something in place that's good and valued. Just in case you don't keep your word, you do not keep your word, I got, I can do something with what I held from you as collateral. So collateral is supported by the word of God. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. It don't even get a chance to swallow it. Still in the mouth. Anything that's good and sinful, it tastes good with the bite. But he said, once it gets in the mouth, it sets your mouth on fire. And then you'll be acting like you're choking down with rocks. It started out sweet, sweet donut cinnamon roll. And now you got a mouthful of gravel. Because he said, anything not rightly purchased, received, you just waiting on the time, you're going to hate your did it. So don't do it in the beginning, then you won't have to worry about what the end it looks like. Every purpose is established by counsel. Purpose is established by counsel. In other words, don't do anything without making sure you know what you're doing before you do it. And with good advice, make war. War? Don't go to war until you make sure you got all your ducks in a row. Don't marry somebody unless you understand what you're doing. Because what we normally do, we make the decision and then we ask questions later. But God is saying you can save yourself that stress. Check these folk out before you see how I do. Or purchase. Like buying a house. Oh, it looks so good. But you have to live there. Ask all the questions. Ask it until you are satisfied. And then said, I'll take it. Otherwise, uh, no. He that goes about as a tail barrel reveals secret. Anybody that has a reputation of gossiping, that's what he goes about, tail bearing. I like, you know, some people get paid for it. Talk shows. And then you got people that just know everything about everybody. He said, but he reveals secrets. People like Gossip. Therefore, meddle not with him that flatter with his lips. Turn off people that talk about people all day long. The word said, you ought not to be paying a person to tell you everybody's business. 
except death. You pay people to do that. Not wise. I can't support. I don't watch. You know, there was a time I watched it, but I don't watch it now. I, and Corona kind of shuts a lot of stuff down. It is just interesting to get in somebody else's bed. I wonder why. Why is your business not so interesting to me? It has nothing to do with me. He said, don't meddle with people like that. In fact, stay away from them. Whoso curse his father or his mother, what's going to happen? His lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. In other words, it will be very dark. Anybody that does not do right by your parents, you see, your life is going to be so dark until it's going to be a different kind of darkness. The lamp that you are being seen with now will eventually be so dark until it's going to be deep. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Get a lot of money, you ain't work for it. It ain't gonna work. Hard work, inheritance gotten easy, hasty, or hastily or quickly. He said that's just like doing getting something so fast you forget how to handle it or manage it or keep it. Gambling, a lot of money got. Before you know you just up there and you don't know how you got there. He said, that's not good. He said, in the end, it's not going to be good. This is God telling us about life and how it works. And we can't argue with it. It's not religious, it's just the truth. Don't tell anybody I will recompense evil. Don't ever tell anybody I'm going to get you. The Lord said, no, nah, it ain't going to work. He said, well, wait on the Lord, and he shall save you. You don't have to protect yourself. All you have to do is do what's right and stay in your lane. And the Lord said, anybody coming after you, I'll take care of you. Here it again. Divers weights are an abomination to the Lord, and a false balance is not good. He already said that a few verses up. In verse 10, and this is verse 23, he said, I'm repeating myself. He said, cheating people is not good. God said, I can't stand it. See, these are the things that are like hangnails or strings attached. We got the, I'm going to heaven part, but we don't have the relationship or business part right. And God said, this, this right here will work in business. It'll work everywhere. All right, man's going are of the Lord. Man, man's goings of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? If God is the light or the navigation system of the world, he said, how are you traveling? Where are you going if I'm not in charge? What kind of country are you going to be if I'm not the one you seek to know how to treat people? I'm a people person. I know how to deal with people. But if you got your own way of doing it, I'm just watching you. And then people that believe you, blind leading the blind, they say, you're going to fall. It is a snare to them or to the man who devours that which is holy. In other words, you destroy lives of people. You trip them up when you don't read the word in a way that people can walk it out. But if you're teaching them and making them dance and shouting like they're in a juke joint, playing the right, all you got to do is play the right music. We can get up out of our seat. And churches are full of juke joints. Music's just right. Keyboard just right. Guitar just right. Bass just right. Drum just right. Saxophone can make you do all kind of funny kind of stuff. He said, you take what is holy and you devour it. That means you take an apple and you just take it and do teeth in the back. And you just, he said, but there's a way to handle my word. That's just one instance of what the scripture could mean. But anything, you know, marriage, you don't honor your vows, you devour it. Anything that is holy, he says, it's going to be a snap to you if you don't do it right. 
And afterwards, you ask questions. You say, and after vows to make inquiry. Now, that means that after a while, well, you know, if, if you let me do it one more time, I'm going to do it right. You know what? what you know what? He said, you ask questions before you do that. Not tear it up and then ask questions. I can even go back to stuff that you buy from Walmart. Walmart, all these different stores or Target, and you buy things and you don't read the direction, tear it up. Then you ask questions. He said, that's, that's not right. Anything that's done right is considered to be a holy thing. Holiness means I did it right. So, but we do it, we don't do it right. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God said, I see inside of you by your motives. That's your candle. That's the candle of the Lord. I'm not looking at what you did. I'm watching your spirit, which is your motive. Why did you do that? And he said, with that candle, I search all the inside parts of your belly, your appetite. I know why you do what you do. I know why you wear purple. I know why you, I know why you do what you do. I know why, and God said, I can read you. I know your motives, and that's what I'm watch, watching, your purpose, and why you did the thing that you did, your appetite. Mercy and truth preserves the king, and his throne is upheld by mercy. He said, anybody in leadership, you have a righteous position. Mercy, for when you need it, truth is what you're supposed to be giving to yourself and others. He said, that's, that puts you, in, it's just like, just like a manager of a store. You are supposed to know the product. You are supposed to be right by the way you do things in your store. Mercy, that I allow, if something goes wrong, I'm going to show you how to fix it. And truth is, you, is, is really valued of what you really stand for. Doing the right thing, truth. Mercy, that means I know sometimes you're going to do some things that you mean right. And truth, but he said that preserves leadership. That preserves kings. And his throne is upheld by mercy. The Lord said, I'm always merciful for you because you're a leader. I know you're going to mess up. I know you're going to be accused. I know they're going to talk about you. But I know that as long as you stay in the word, the truth, and, and stay with integrity, then your business will always thrive. These are just relationship, relation, how to, to deal in business, how to deal with other people, period. The glory of young men is their strength. Young men, God said, I, I need you because you're strong. That's your beauty. I gave you strength. And the beauty of old men is how long they've been in the earth with that wisdom. Now, these are righteous men. We're not talking about old men who have good gray because it ran, it's hereditary. But it's the gray-haired men who have been walking with God's word long enough to help somebody else. God said, that's a beautiful thing. The last verse. The blueness of a wound cleans away evil. The blueness of a wound cleans away evil. Now, I asked a nurse last night. I said, is that talking about a certain uh, spot cut on you and then it turns a color? And her being a nurse, she said, I'm not sure about that. But I, she said, but I do know that if a man did wrong and he had to get hooked for it, that that wound will, will clean, cleanse his understanding of doing something wrong. And he says, so do the stripes, the inner parts of the belly. So what it's basically saying from her point of view, in which I agree, because we talk every night about scripture, and then we try to get a good understanding about what is what it is saying after we study several commentaries. But it's just saying that sometimes wounds to make you stop will make you think about whether or not you're going to do it again. And the strikes that you see will make you look at it and say, I changed my mind. I am not going to do that no more. But and later on, we're going to find out how God's word says, and it said in a few chapters back, that uh, a rod, a child must um, the the rod of correction 
And we put that up for debate. We put that up for discussion. No, I raised six sons, and this may not be talking particularly about this. And I gave them good whoopings. I did. I promoted. Oh, you can't do that. Yes, I can. Because I told my children, I'd rather give you something you can remember that I did than you get to an age where somebody else said they did. Because what I put on you, you'll live again. But if I let you get back what I know you are already doing in this house, you might try this in somebody else's house. And they may have a different tool to protect themselves. So to keep you safe here, don't try me. Because I want you to live. But now we put these laws in place and we're burying young men by the day. Because there is nobody to bring the rod of correction. Now you can't just whoop a child and it's not talking about this right now, but I'm talking about it right now. You got to demonstrate, you got to teach, you got to pray, you got to watch. And if you did all of that, he still won't listen. Well, they give me something, let me show you how I feel to disobey me. And you'll understand that um, I'm going to do that in this house. And I admit that. They're all grown now. And uh, the graffiti on the wall and breaking in houses and all the foolishness of a child that was neglected, it didn't happen at my house. And if they did anything wrong, and I boast not, I just know that it works for me and my house. They're all grown now. And I pray that they go back to the Word and, and train their children or themselves to stay in here. But all I can say is when they were living with me, I didn't have to have a judge to tell me what God had already spoken. It didn't take a whole lot of whooping, but it did take some. And all of them didn't get a whooping. Some of them got more than others. But I loved every last one of them still. But will I do I regret having done? I probably, I was learning while I was doing it. <laughs> but I would, I would them again, I would. Anyway, because I love you so much, I'm about to kill you. The day you break one for one shoot. And God smiled at me. And he said what he said, I agree with God. Father, we thank you for your wonderful relationship with us that you showed us how to relate with others. And this is what you gave us. And if we put to practice, we'll be doing good in this earth. And our business will thrive. Our homes will be together. Our children will learn integrity and we'll leave this earth and just be around you who allow us to see what we ought to be doing here in this life. Thank you for your time. Spend with us as a father. In Jesus' name we pray your name.